Greetings and uh, welcome to the Film School. My name is Joe. I am your host uh, for this episode. I'm here with my good friend LJ, who is going to be guest doing, hosting Joe? today. I'm doing all right. LJ here is with uh, Dead Serial Podcast. I'm the host of the Dead Serial Podcast, which you've been a guest on a couple times. Yes, I have. I Always a good time. Which you can find on Instagram at dead underscore serial and on iTunes and Google Play, one word, dead serial. Yeah, it's good stuff. But we're nice. not here to talk about that. <laughs> we can. We're, we'll because we'll it's a good it's a good podcast, and I and I have been on it, so I gotta I gotta say it's a good. At podcast. least check out those episodes, or all of them. But <laughs> yeah, no. Um, but yeah, so I'm kind of excited. We got we got a good topic tonight. We're gonna do our uh, review of Jordan Peele's new uh, horror film, psychological horror film, Us, which uh, came out what uh, last weekend. And, uh, Last Friday, yeah. I saw it Thursday night. Did you? I saw it. Oh, no, Saturday. it was a Tuesday night. It came out two weeks ago this coming Friday, and I saw it last Tuesday. Okay, that's right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Wednesday, I saw it Wednesday with Chris, who unfortunately couldn't make it tonight. What's up, Chris? You having fun, so... buddy? Miss you. Okay. <laughs> None of that going into us. That's for <laughs> negative. Sure. But uh, us was um, uh, surprising. Surprisingly. Good follow-up, a nice uh, sophomore effort from Jordan Peele. Because usually, uh, with filmmakers, their second film, it's it's either comparable it's as good as their first film, yeah. or it's not. I mean, there's just no middle ground. And it's the first film being Get Out. Get Out, yep. Yeah. Which course, was a phenomenal movie. You, might, you may know him from Key and Peele and Mad TV and if Children's you don't know Hospital. About Key and Peele, at yeah. the very least. Which that finally got a complete collection <laughs> uh, DVD release, which I'm really excited about because I may have to. Pick that Snag up, it. yeah. yeah nice. And of course, the movie Keanu, which is kind of a Key and Peele movie, even though neither Keegan Michael Key or Jordan Peele directed it, but they wrote it. They're in it. They're the leads. They play multiple characters. Actually, it was a good comedy, and so kind of a Excuse nice uh, uh, shift uh, in tone for Jordan Peele, who in Key and Peele, if you you know you've seen the series, they do a lot of uh, horror sketches, especially their Halloween yeah. specials. And I'm I'm now convinced that that was all Jordan Peele. He seems to have become like in <laughs> in less than two and a half years since Get Out came uh, was released. He's become sort of a new one of the new masters of horror. Yeah, you know he's also hosting a, and uh, he's carved his name in the tree at least. Yeah. Did you notice in the the press stuff for us uh, in the initial interviews for that Jordan Peele is wearing Jack's outfit from The Shining. No, I never noticed like that. Velvet coat, the flannel shirt, and really? to a T. Wow. No, I actually <laughs> have not watched so a lot of promotion think, for us. I think he might be edging his way into uh, definitely a master of horror. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he's also the current narrator or host and uh, producer of the new Twilight Zone on CBS All Access, which right. that we'll have to talk about that another time um, or, or later on, whatever. But uh Mainly, we're gonna we're gonna jump into us when this. We're gonna have some spoilers here, so spoiler uh, brief morning. synopsis before we get into the uh, spoilers. So just lead to start off, yeah, I'll take I'll take the lead on this. <laughs> this movie, oh the hands, I forget about that. Sorry, the, oh, this movie wow. um, is basically about a uh, a family uh, basically going out for a vacation in a it looks like their summer cabin. Uh, when it's actually things, a nice um, cabin. It actually is. <laughs> yeah. it, well, outdated but cozy. You no, know, I like that. The other yeah. one, the other cabin, a little too modern, a little too big, <laughs> yeah. but nice, nice. But yeah. no, it's uh, it, you know, a family going on a vacation where they encounter uh, evil doppelgangers of themselves, and that's the basic uh, synop- like kind of plot that you would see from the trailer. But there's some really nice twists and turns in this film. It, uh, the trailer was almost misleading to me. It almost seemed more supernatural, uh, but it, it not really. It's a... that's more a sci-fi field. Yeah, it. yeah. I, I went into it expecting a supernatural take, and yeah. it kind of leads you off in that spooky way. And the one one of the twists is the fact that it's actually more of like a sci-fi, sci-fi. thriller. Um, yeah, uh, I really. I, I have to say that I really enjoyed this film. It's for me. It's it's probably the best horror film that I've seen in a while, um, that I can think of off the bat. I mean, loved Halloween, but this is Halloween this is definitely uh, a different ball game because even though it is a horror film, 
it also has a lot of psychological horror movie elements and um you know break, break the, the, the tension yeah. which was really good i mean it's jordan peele so i mean his background is well, comedy so i kind of <laughs> expect that uh, i mean there was humor in get out too but uh almost feels like this and get out are kind of like um almost feature length twilight zone episodes or maybe exist in the same cinematic universe <laughs> a shared a shared <laughs> universe so to speak um, well, I know that you were telling me that uh, uh, Jordan Peele had mentioned that it was possible in He early... didn't deny it in several interviews. Yeah. And I even But that was when he was promoting Get sources. Out, though, right? Yeah, you did. You no, did. no, I found was a couple that was for, for us. For this? Yeah. Okay. I mean, I, that's fine. I don't think it's necessary for it to be a shared universe. I think thematically they're going to be similar because of Jordan Peele's approach to storytelling and horror, you know? It'd be like reading a Stephen King book. It's going to be a Stephen King book. Yeah, but whether or not they're be, set in the same continent, I think yeah. it's Stephen King universe. It could be Tommy Knockers, or it could be Pennywise. Yeah, from so a couple of different Stephen King. Thematic novels. elements for sure, but I like how okay. This is what I was going to earlier: is that it's it is a horror film, but because of the psychological aspects, it's a little bit restrained. It's not an overly he doesn't do like overly graphic horror movies. A lot of gory content and it's yeah. definitely not, not, not like you know hostile or <laughs> saw or serbian well, film or any of those, those kind two of films. franchises personally yeah me either just my opinion but what i hate no yeah it's <laughs> i agree i mean i agree with you but if you like those movies that's totally fine <laughs> nobody can you like like what you like um i mean some people like films like the video dead and and um some of the low budget horror movies that you get on VHS in the 80s. I'm not a huge fan of a lot of those movies either. <laughs> There's a lot of shit in there. Oh, yeah. Sorry, <laughs> we'll bleep it out. There's a lot of crap in there. I forget this is going there on you YouTube go. and not yeah. the I think podcast we'll be right. is free form and yeah, podcast ex explicit. Sorry. Anything you want to say. I'm out of my get. element. <laughs> I interrupted you were saying. No, no I'm, I'm, I'm happy sorry. that you're here because um, <laughs> I'm glad that we both got a chance to see this movie. And uh, I, dude, I gotta say the performances of this film is what for me really carried oh, it. Dude, amazing! I mean, I loved the direction of the film, the cinematography, the costume. Yeah. There's some questions with how the costumes and where did they get all the scissors, whatever. Anyways, but those and just, the acting, yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, uh, especially phenomenal. Lupita Nyong'o. Um, from Black Panther and uh, Winston Duke also yeah, right from, Duke both from, from Black Panther that's so cool that uh, it's kind of like when you watch um, is this what happened to, to them after the snap maybe maybe after the decimation <laughs> yeah they went this, <laughs> this is, is what happened this is the soul stone <laughs> they're, yeah, they're... oh another spoiler sorry <laughs> well we, we did tell you spoilers <laughs> maybe we should have said this is the spoiler uh, part of the show but you, you kind of already did. knew that yeah but, no, we cover uh, our bases we're it's kind of like when you watch um <laughs> Uh, Ex Machina with um, Oscar Isaac and uh, Denholm Gleeson. They're both in the new oh, Star yeah. Wars movie, so it's like watching them together in another universe. Like, interesting, right? It just reminded me Game of Thrones final season's coming, but oh, that's right. A anyways, us yeah. and the acting and the Black Panther connection, a little, connection. little MCU yeah. connection there, but of course, not not part of the same continuity. But I love seeing actors who are part of franchises get to work with each other outside of those franchises. Absolutely. And that's, that's, but here, um, well, Lupita, those two actors in particular really seem to work amazing together. Yeah. They were it, good. Like couple. it worked. Yeah. I thought they were a couple. The whole family, the whole family worked for me. Like I the believed The family it. was awesome. Honestly, the acting all the way around. Yeah. Phenomenal. Yeah. Even all, I mean, just, it's, it's not really an ensemble piece, but there are other supporting actors in it. And they all did a, a really good job, uh, including, um, gosh, I always forget her name. She's on uh, Handmaiden's Tale, and she was in Mad Men and on Invasion. The um, rich guy's wife. Yeah. Should that. we cheat? We're going to cheat. IMDb. Because I want to get her name right. As soon as I see it, I know I'm going to be like, yeah, of course, duh. Elizabeth Moss. Elizabeth of course. Moss. So maybe we'll cut that part. Right, I don't know. So Elizabeth Moss <laughs> was a really good supporting player in this movie, too. Um, I think she got more of a spotlight than than the actor playing her husband, but because I mean she's a more established actor. Yeah. So, but uh, all around, 
He did great. good. I they thought, all he, did I thought good. he was a douchebag, but her, yeah. oh, her yeah. role was way more entertaining. Yeah, absolutely. And especially that scene in the the bedroom where you think she's gonna mm. mess with Red. Yeah, because that's really who Red is, right? Yeah, yeah. Spoiler that alert! Twist. <laughs> oh, the ending of this was so cool. Um, they dropped hints the whole time, so I was got surprised my brain. I didn't see it coming. Honestly. I don't know. If, I didn't think. I, I don't. I don't think I saw it crystal clear until towards the end and then it was like i wonder and then oh okay yeah i was on the right path there but i wasn't really do you, i wasn't looking for that i was just going along with the story and it just started to hey, unravel i wonder hey, i wonder but i wasn't convinced minute. and then it was and then it turned out to be what i thought it was going to be which was a nice twist i liked how it ended up being more of a science fiction or a horror film than supernatural because there just aren't enough science fiction horror films compared to the supernatural <laughs> and slasher horror genres, True. right? So, um, overall, I mean, I'm going to have to say that because uh, I want to see it again. I want to see it again. I feel like there are a lot should of nuances. Should we go see it again? I think we should. Let's go see it again. I feel like there were a lot of nuances <laughs> I might have missed. Um, Lupita Nyong'o's performance was phenomenal. Absolutely. Playing both roles. And, and everybody wow. playing an alter ego of, of the of themselves was yeah but she's that, the only that, one who got a chance they did to phenomenal even the, the younger kids in the movie mm-hmm. did phenomenal but she's the only one who gets a chance to really speak as her doppelganger yeah. you know and and just the the mannerisms and the ticks and the voice and everything it was just so captivating i don't know that's the only thing way i could describe this film it was a captivating horror film that lured me in uh, by getting me engrossed into the characters and then taking you on a horror, uh, kind of a psychological horror journey that really wasn't overly cliched. It wasn't, there were a lot of nods to other yeah. horror films and, and things placed in there, but it wasn't. And it, it kind of generic. posed the conspiracy theorist question, too. Like Which what, one? What the, who was running this whole program to create these doppelgangers? At, that were tethered to the above people. What's the current um, theory yeah. online on, on that? I don't know. It's got to be Illuminati, right? It could be the Wayland Lizard U- people. What about Wayland Utani? Mm-hmm. Oh. Ah, now we're. No, that's too much. If you don't know which franchise that's from, <laughs> franchises even. Yeah, that's yeah. that's true now. Yeah. Ah. So uh, <laughs> could be something like that then, or maybe it's from. Uh, the Terrell Corporation, Blade Runner. <laughs> Maybe it's the early prototypes. It's probably a government thing. Yeah, I'm guessing government. It's got to be a government program, or I think probably the most intriguing theory I read is there was the Red Society and Get Out. Yeah, which was a secret cult order that was trying to find a way, a key to immortality. Sure, all uh, being John Malkovich. There's stuff. Red and Us. Yeah. There's a lot of red references in us mm-hmm. as to what's going on and what's transpiring. So could it be a part of that? I, I it dig could the be. theory. Now, if that connects it to Get Out, that's one thing, because yeah. then it would be almost like a Cloverfield, you know, where there's a loose connection between them. Otherwise, to me, it's, you know, sometimes those questions just aren't answered because that's not what the story is necessarily about. It's kind of like, 28, uh, not 20 days later, but The Walking Dead, like the reason why I don't watch Fear of the Walking Dead is I don't really need to see how the zombie apocalypse right. begins. What was it like before Rhett Grimes? Yeah, I don't need to see that because that's where the story begins. I think begins. I watched the first three or four episodes. Now, if people, Man. you know, people watch it, they like it, and there's yeah. nothing wrong it with it. It seems like it's very well done. Uh, more of the same, I would, yeah. I would guess. But I personally don't feel the need to invest into another show that's a prequel series. Well, I guess now it's <laughs> was caught up to the current series for a while to the current series did its jump but I don't really feel the need to, to do that because not everything needs to be explained to me like I like the fact that Lost that they haven't done any prequel series or TV movies to try and wrap Leave up what Lost the island is alone. the island is the island Please, and, and it's a it mystery alone. and yeah. an enigma and that's the beauty of it because Lost, then I can create my Lost own theories protecting the island yeah we don't need Leave to go back alone. there so, so there may not need to be an explanation to how the clones were created and how they were tethered to the to their clone you know how yeah. would they be mentally linked to their 
you know, why are they in red and one gloves and scissors and why only rabbits? Well, and, and, well, and I, the theory is the rabbits refer to cloning, I guess. Sure. Because the makes tethers sense. are clones. Yeah. Which kind of makes sense. But, but then as sustenance, or I guess they yeah. weren't, they were experiments. And then when they were abandoned, they had to resort to eating the rabbits, I believe, because they had nothing yeah. else. And that's another thing. I mean, yeah, why were they abandoned? But th- that's not even the point. That's I mean, not the point. The point is us and what it means to think, are we the monster? Are we our own worst enemy? Sure. Also, the class structure. There's definitely... A class structure going on because the tethered have you know everything that's positive that happens for the the, the above the people? above people know, the, the natural people the, the non clones <laughs> the non tethered they're all tethered so but yeah like the 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 regular people anything that happens that's good for them it seems to have a negative effect underground with with the tethered and. So like this complete, so it's almost like a class structure of like middle class and wealthy to poor and, you know, so I mean, just little, so I like that in a horror film when a horror film can have more subtext, maybe not quite as deep as some people are trying to dive, but in in the same vein as George A. Romero's Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead and well, and even Dawn of the Dead, it's class, it's definitely got satirical elements about the class structure. There's something else going on and And politics and yeah. Yeah. And, and I think that's what sometimes can elevate. I mean, Poltergeist doesn't have any of that kind of stuff, and it's still a great horror film. But that's Absolutely. just because the story in itself <laughs> is just really good and it entertaining. Yeah. But you can have deeper themes in a horror film, like Silence of the Lambs and Us and Get Out and uh, you know Dawn of the Dead, uh, the George Romero version, and, and Night of the Living Dead. They can have deeper themes and subtext and just it gets you it just i don't know kind of fires the synapses a little bit more gives you a little bit more to think about you know and uh, i i highly recommend this like like we uh, lj said we're gonna see it again because it's so good right that's what we're saying uh and i would say if you're only going to see it once this is not a wait for red box digital download absolutely forget that this is an amazing piece of Film and it should be seen in the theater on the big screen. Yeah, the cinematography was and really the sound. Good. Yeah, it was amazing. The soundtrack's amazing. The lighting, the use of color, because there were there were the deep blues and a lot of reds. And again, it's surprisingly Red um, <laughs> it's violent, but it's surprisingly restrained in, in how much violence it shows you. You know, it wasn't yeah. an overly gory film. It doesn't need to be horror. Doesn't necessarily need to be just guts and shock and. Yeah jump scares like it can be genuinely creepy and get under your skin and this film could do that no it was amazing kudos jordan pill yeah so normally I uh i give uh, a, a a rating system a star rating system a one to four stars okay. so on my break, scale break it down for me um <laughs> well just just let's just I've say heard this it before I just the one to four star it. it seems to be the easiest way the most common way that people generally do reviews when you start adding five, six, ten stars, it gets really complicated because what is eight and a half? Thirteen out of quadruple stars. (laughs) So I just do simple um one to four um with halves. So I would give this film three and a half. So as a horror film, it is above a lot of other typical horror films. Uh, and as a More film recent, on its own, especially yeah, sorry, no, no, you're on on its own merits as a film, three and a half because to me it's it's nearly a perfect psychological science fiction horror film. So, I would give it three and a half stars out of a four star rating. What what kind of rating would you give it? I'd give it three and a half. I think that's fair. Yeah. Um, four is perfect. Four is hard, obviously, uh, but again, acting, writing, directing. The production, the soundtracks. I, I mean, every, everything was good. Uh, but yeah, there was some parts where it kind of took me out of it. Sure. Because they set up this really groovy tone and, and like you said, supernatural, spooky, spooky twist. Yeah. Um, and then it went kind of sci-fi and, and I appreciated it, but I didn't expect it and it just kind of took me out. Three and a half stars. See? Final answer. There's some really good imagery, too. Uh, this film managed to make just a, a single family 
standing in a driveway at night look creepy. Oh. Like creepy yeah. and scary and husband's she reaction. She them off. Like what was the choo -choo, whatever she yeah. did. That, that alone. No. Just, just the noises they make. Again. The noises they make were so cool. Oh, I wouldn't. You're cool <laughs> with it, right? Just YouTube. Just stuff. go ahead. Just we'll bleep it out. All right. We'll bleep that out. But just the, uh, the, the use of sound and like the creepy noises crawling on the house. And yeah. It just, I don't know, it got under my skin. It didn't give me nightmares. It's been a long time since a movie's <laughs> given me nightmares. I think 28 days later, I think the first time I saw that at Sundance, uh, it did creep me out where I had, I guess you would call them nightmares, but like normally movies don't haven't done that to me since I was a kid. But this movie, just the atmosphere alone got, got under the skin. Yeah. And you really like the family. You know, like they're a good functional they family. Likeable. And the acting was great. You buy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's a family. So once again, highly recommend it. And um, I just want to uh, thank LJ for stopping by on this episode. He's and filling in for Chris. He's going to have, he's going to be on here more, <laughs> but mainly he works on his uh, dead serial podcast, which again, uh, where can you, where can you find all that? Instagram dead underscore serial iTunes, Google play one word dead serial. And dead again, serial. at least check out the episodes with Joe. Yeah, I, that, I would appreciate that. That'd be good. He'd appreciate that. So, uh, but let us know if any of you saw us uh, and you and you like it, don't like it. Either way, just let us know. Any any cool theories uh, as to how it connects to Get Out or on its own, just kind of its own out. mysteries. <laughs> he says it connects. I say <laughs> it could, but it doesn't I matter won't be if it does. Hurt if it doesn't, yeah. <laughs> Um, but as always, be nice in the comments, um, trying to create an open forum here for, for discussion. Um, so um, as always, thank you for joining us, and uh, we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Uh-oh. Ooh, it quit unexpectedly at the 32-minute mark. Sound it? Yeah. How long did it? I got that. How long did it film? Uh... It's still recording. Is it? Yeah. Okay.